Hi parents, I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk about digital citizenship and how that relates to Google Classroom. A lot of us are seeing Google Classroom for the first times and we want to be able to support our own personal children and make sure that they are making good choices and also so that they are aware things that you post in Google Classroom never really go away. There's going to be two parts to this video. The first part is going to be the students inside of Google Classroom and the rights that they have, the commenting features that they have, what it looks like to be a student in Google Classroom. And then I'm going to switch to the teacher perspective and I'm going to show you what the teacher can see, the, what the teacher can edit and change, and some of the things that the teacher can do if a student is not showing good digital citizenship. I hope this clears up any confusion. I highly encourage you to watch this video and then talk with your own personal students about the great ways to use digital citizenship with Google Classroom. Let's get started. Before I enroll students inside of Google Classroom, I like to show them this poster and we have a quick discussion of each of the letters and we talk about what are good posts, what are not great posts, and just some tools so that they understand what happens when you are using digital media, when you're using social media, and when you're using an LMS or a learning management system like Google Classroom. I highly suggest that you revisit this poster with your own children often, maybe even once a week, maybe even every single day, just to remind them of great digital citizenship rules. Okay, this is the student perspective of Google Classroom. I am currently enrolled as a student in this classroom called Test Classroom. As you can see on the stream, I have the option as a student to post on the stream. Now, a good post for a student to post would be something like, have you completed the math assignment? I have a few questions and about number two. Okay, now this would be a great post because this would be on topic for the classroom. It would allow other students, if they had trouble understanding the content, to say, oh yeah, remember that trick that Ms. Orts taught you, and so forth. This is a really great post, and this is a great way for kiddos to communicate and collaborate inside of Google Classroom. Now, this is also a place where the teacher can go and look and say, oh, it looks like a couple of kiddos need help with number two. Maybe I need to go back and reteach that. Now, as a student, if I decide that maybe I want to get rid of that post, I can always go and click on the three dots and hit delete. Now, a not so positive post would be something like this, and this is where digital citizenship would come into play. Okay, maybe a kiddo is bored at home and they want to be able to chat and they would say, this is so cool, let's chat here. Now, this is not the greatest post because number one, it doesn't deal with our content in our classroom. And what it's going to do is other kids are going to see this and then the whole stream is going to be filled up with students chatting. Okay. So once again, as the student, if I post this and I realize, oh man, this is not a great post, I can come in and hit delete. Okay, so that is the stream. The best way to explain the stream to the students is ask for help here if you feel comfortable posting to everyone inside of the classroom or use this as a place for meaningful discussions. Anything that is posted in the stream Every single person in the classroom can see it, including the teacher. Now let's go over to the classwork tab. Now classwork is a little bit different because this is where students see the actual work that they have to do and most of the things in classwork are graded. Now I'm going to open up this assignment by clicking view assignment and I have a couple of options here. Now, it, this just popped up, and I think this is great. It says, talk with your teacher. Private comments are great for students. 
If the student needs help with an assignment and they don't feel comfortable posting on the stream, this is a direct private line to the teacher. So I have looked at this assignment as a student. I'm not sure what to do. I can say, please help me. Can we set up a time to Zoom? And like I said, this is super private. If you have a shy kiddo, they can privately message the teacher and the teacher can set up a time to work with them. No one can see this private comment except the student and the teacher. Now on the flip side, once again, there's a class comment. And so a positive or a good digital citizenship comment would be, this is so cool. I'm so excited. Okay, this is a great way for the students to show their enthusiasm, maybe share ideas about a project, and so forth. Now, a not so great post might be like, why are we doing this? I'm so over this work. Okay, so a good, good digital citizenship post here, and then a not so great one. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm showing you how to delete all of these comments for a reason, and you'll see that on the teacher side in just a minute. So, once again, these class comments are viewable by all classmates, and every classmate can also reply to each other. So let me show you what that looks like as well. Now, if I was a different student enrolled in this classroom, I could see this comment and I could reply to that classmate and I could kind of start a discussion from there. Like I said before, this is a great way for students to collaborate with each other, but sometimes when someone posts something negative, it kind of makes a spiraling effect and then all of the students get on this train of being negative. So we have to be very careful what we comment about assignments. Now, another thing that I want to show over here is your work. A lot of the students are having trouble clicking this button that says mark as done. When you have completed an assignment, parents, please remind your kiddos to mark it as done. This helps the teacher and for several reasons. First, the teacher gets a notification that the student has turned in, and that's, a, that's great so that the teacher can go and grade the assignment. And also, if you mark it as done, this also clears up their classwork stream and kind of grays out that assignment so that the student doesn't see, feel like they have a million things due. I'm going to go ahead and mark this as done so that you can see what it looks like on the student perspective. And so once you've marked it as done, you can see that there's a button that says unsubmit. So if you've accidentally marked it as done and you're not, you can unsubmit that as well. And let's go back to the stream, to the classwork tab, so you can see what it looks like. And now you can see that instead of being orange like these, this one is now grayed out. And so you can tell that you have turned that in. All right, so if we go back to the stream, all right, I'm going to go and look at a post that another classmate has made. So student 32 posted something here. As a classmate in this classroom, I can come in and I can reply to classmates posts. I can say that's so fun and then hit that button. Remember, on the stream, students can reply to other classmates' posts as well. I can view all of the classmates' posts and see everything that's going on. And you can see how long this post is, which is a great way for students to collaborate. Okay, parents, let's jump into Google Classroom from the teacher's perspective. So. I am now a teacher inside of this Google Classroom. Now, what do you first see here? Oops, I see some deleted comments. So on the teacher end, if a kiddo posts something and then they decide to delete it, as the teacher, I can immediately see all of those posts. That's why it's so important for those kiddos to look at that poster, the think poster, and then decide before I hit that post button, is this really something that needs to be posted inside of the classroom? Okay, 
So you can tell that you delete it because you see that grayed out delete it button. And then as we scroll down, I can see everything that was posted by each student. So for instance, at 839, I posted something as a student and so forth. Now, let's go over to classwork and I'm gonna look at that private comment that I made. So I'm gonna click here. And I do have two class comments. So remember, I posted this and then I deleted it again. So there's my student that deleted a comment. And if I go into view assignment, I can then go over here and I can click on this student name and I can see that they have sent a private message and I can respond back to them privately and just say yes. Let's set up a time. And once again, this is a private comment and only the student and the teacher will see that comment. Now a couple more settings that I want to show you from the teacher perspective. If I go over to the people tab and only the teacher can make do these settings. Students cannot do these settings, just the teachers in the classroom. Now, if I click on my name as a student, I can come up here to actions and I can go to mute. Okay. Now the muting feature is something that I don't like to use a lot, but sometimes when students are not showing great digital citizenship. This is something that I recommend teachers do just to kind of give the kiddos a wake up call and so forth. Every teacher is going to have their own set of guidelines when it comes to using the mute button or each campus will have their own set of guidelines. So you may want to reach out to your teacher about those exact guidelines. When a student is muted, they can still see all of their, their work. They can submit all of their work. They can read all the comments. They can read all the posts but they cannot post on their own. So they can see all the work, but they're missing out on all of that collaboration feature. They're missing out communicating with their classmates. They still can send private comments to their teacher, so they're not missing that connection with their teacher. But it is something that sometimes we have to use as teachers to make sure a child knows the great digital citizenship rules. So you can see that now the student is now muted. And if I go back to the stream, I can also see that the student is muted as well. Now from the teacher end, it's really easy to unmute a student. You can click here and then hit unmute. So when a teacher mutes a student, obviously um, they want to have communication with that student and let them know why they are muted. Now another thing that I want to show you in the settings is that showing deleted items is turned on for me as the teacher. You can turn those deleted items on and off. And as you can read on the screen, only the teachers can view those deleted items. If a student's posts are deleted, um, as the teacher, I always go and take a screenshot just so I have um, I have evidence so that I have pictures to show parents in case something comes up and so forth. So those deleted items can be archived for later. The last thing I want to talk about um, from the teacher perspective is on this classroom it says invite guardians. This is just one of my training classrooms so I don't have anyone's personal information on here. As a parent, if you have been invited as a guardian, you should be you should be receiving kind of like a snapshot of Google Classroom and what your child is doing in Google Classroom and what their due dates are. So if you haven't received those emails, be on the lookout for those emails as well. Thank you for watching today's video. I know that a lot of parents, this is their first time to ever see Google Classroom and it can be confusing, it can be worrisome knowing that your kiddo is immersed in a completely digital classroom. Like I mentioned before, just talk to your kiddos, talk to them about that think poster, remind them if it's something that they wouldn't say out loud to their parents or in class that they shouldn't say digitally in Google Classroom. Parents, I think you're doing a wonderful job immersing yourself into this learning experience as well. So please don't forget to give yourself a pat on the back. And please continue to encourage your kiddos and tell them how lucky they are to have this learning experience and to continue their education. 
I hope everyone has a great day. If you have any further questions from the parent or student perspective, please add them in the comments below and good luck.